All right, buddy, how's it going? Good thing, good thing. That's what's up, man. You know, numbers doing crazy on the interviews, man. They really f***ing with you. They love us. It ain't just me. You know what I'm saying? You got to give yourself the credibility, too. They love us both. You know what I'm saying? Because majority of it is your audience, and then I got my audience, you know what I'm saying? But they love us together, though, for a hell of a collaboration. Yeah, that's for sure, man. I thought we'd get into some of the news that I've seen about you. You know what I'm saying? We kind of tapped on this on the first interview, but uh, it kind of seems to keep coming back up. So, you know, I thought we'd dive into it a little bit more. Um, you know, uh, J-Man. Oh, yeah, man. Recently... I think you guys kind of been back and forth. You know, he made a diss song about you. You know, I know you guys were homies or, you know, at least come from the same area. You know what I mean? That's, and, and you know, what what makes it so crazy, you know what I'm saying? It it it, it come down to clout, you know what I'm saying? If it wasn't about this, this internet shit, motherfuckers chasing a certain type of clout, motherfuckers wouldn't get a certain type of reaction and reply from people, you know what I'm saying? Because Jay Main is saying, nigga, who I made sure that he was accepted through the hood. Because when nobody fucking with him or FYB, you only hear Ray Rail and DJ that was getting fucked with. You know what I'm saying? I made it with Thaddeus and Archie and J-Main, them was valid. Okay. So it's just about clout, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not really about uh, anything. It's not. Nothing else, man. It's all about clout. You got to think about it. My first video dropped J-Main was right there on, on the side of me. The first, my first rap song. First rap video, any of that, Jay Man was right there on the side of me. He made sure the video got shot. You know what I'm saying? That that just showed a fake love. That's what a fake love come in at. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker do anything for attention. But I never say nothing bad about my brothers. I love my brothers. Good or bad turns. Period. Okay. You know, also since we last talked about it, man, uh Little J dropped some more paperwork. Yeah, that shit false. That you know what I'm saying? Real documents, you know what I'm saying? That's what I uploaded. Law Library, signature, you know what I'm saying? Some, something that a person can't fake. You can't fake an Alfred Davis. You know what I'm saying? I can't go, I can't walk down to the Law Library and sign and get a Law Library, I mean, get an Alfred Davis step, you know what I'm saying, by the Law Library if I'm not Jeff McGraw. That's not something I did, you know what I'm saying? In order for me to get them documents that I had, he had to do what he did, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, motherfucker might look at it one way, but I look at it like, hey, we was going through what we was going through. He said I was telling on him, but he did some stand-up shit at the end. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, niggas don't get, don't begin niggas they credit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's just, you go right back to cloud chasing. You know, uh, one thing I did notice is that he had to put out two parts of paperwork. Like, he put out the initial part and then the second part, which I kind of didn't really understand why why anybody would release two different separate things of paperwork. Man, and you know, when they upload the first, when they upload the first documents, everybody, oh yeah, people was paying attention to it. They was paying more close attention to it. Everybody pointed out to, oh yeah, well that's not right. Then this one had been said had this document been real. But when the second paperwork came out, you know what I'm saying? Like I told people before any of this even started, I say, hey look, he the bigger name, he the bigger, he, he he, he he got the most attention. So whatever he say, they gonna believe. And sure enough shit stink. It it happened. Just how I said it would. You know what I'm saying? He 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 painted a uh a, a, a scenario. Well not even scenario. What's the actual word I'm looking for? He painted a motherfucking uh a, a He painted a narrative. And the narrative that he painted, you gotta think about it. He, him, and, him, and, him and Chief Keith had the largest fan base in Chicago, right? So you got, this is realistically. So whatever motherfucker, whatever, that's just like, if I tell my fans a certain thing, my fans is gonna believe me. And they ain't gonna believe nothing else nobody else say, no matter what that person say to defend they self or to proving they innocence. They still gonna believe who they look up to the most. They gonna believe they favor rapper, they favor whoever. The person they look up to, that's who they gonna believe. They not gonna believe the actual facts. Mm, that's actually true. That's actually true. I've seen that happen lots of times that fans actually don't care about the facts. They just care about riding with the dude who they're a fan of. Yeah. I've seen that several times, man. Well, speaking of Little J, man, 
I came across the picture of him looking like he was throwing a BD in a picture. Did you see that? You, I know, I know firsthand, man. You know, not to, not to make it seem like you know this is a Lil J show, but he was BD. A lot of them, a lot of, the, a lot of niggas. What people gotta understand is, just because we BDK and we from 63rd or we from 62nd, Jaro, Mob, no matter. Crazy for you, motherfucker. They all, they all GDs. They all BDK. No, we got some of the guys, Foles, Stones, Justin, CVL, fucking Kills, a four corner hustler. You know what I'm saying? You got BDs. You got to think about uh, Skinny, Fat Shawty. All them niggas. A lot of the guys was BDs. You know what I'm saying? Brick BD, Measle with Stone. You know what I'm saying? It, we ain't. All just GDs. We just known for a GD hood because our hood was initially GDs. That, you know how that go. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, for, for people who aren't from Chicago, it probably can be a little confusing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, for an example, like, if a crip turns into a blood, bro, it's like a no-go. Yeah. Big time. For sure. You know what I mean? So so like from from us from the outside looking, you know what I'm saying? It's just a cultural <laughs> difference. For you sure. You know what I mean? But then you gotta think of it like this though, at the same time, Crip and Blood, you know, they two different styles, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, a granted motherfucker look at a Crip turn blood crazy. When you look at a GD turn B D or a BD turn G D, motherfucker be like, okay, they still under the six. You gotta think about it. It's one love. At the end of the day, we all still holding up the star of Davis. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I guess it's cool for them niggas to flip. I don't know. I'm not into that thing. Oh, yeah, whole hoods that flips. Niggas, whole block. <laughs> I seen somewhere that Little J and Duck had some sort of issue going on. You know, I don't really know what it was about. Like, I don't think... Anybody's ever really talked about it, but is there anything you can talk about? I mean, honestly, the only thing that's really worth, well, it ain't even really worth talking about, but, you know, Lil J and Duck had gotten to it about, Duck was recording more with a, with an engineer at one point, and Lil J felt like, damn, you recording Duck, but you ain't recording me, and I brought you around these niggas. And Lil J went over there to the nigga, to the nigga, uh, booth up, broke the laptops, speakers, Mics and shit like that. He wanted to to that bitch up like a little thought, little mama shit. But other than that, motherfucker don't really speak on that other shit. Motherfucker don't speak on that other bit. That other bit is not even for the camera. I'm like, did he? Did he ruin? Uh, like you said, he ruined a lot of equipment. You know what I'm saying? Like, did he ruin anything else? Like songs or anything like that? I mean, you know, motherfuckers was back by back. back Backbiting the guys on features, little shows, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, with Kawan, Kawan uh, Butler. No, no, Kawan Leonard. Hold on. Kawan Leonard just won the championship not too long ago, right? Yep. All right, so, Two years ago. All right, so I'm talking about Kawan Butler then. Oh, my daddy. So, look, Kawan Butler. We was fucking with Kawan Butler down in, uh, in, uh, in Green Bay and shit. So, you know, he, GD, real one of the guys. He... Fucking with us. Now he paid this one. Motherfuckers did this shit with Rich Homie Quan. This, you know, this one we was all on the stage. Motherfucker had to jump off the stage, help Rich Homie Quan on my daddy. But now, you know, Duck B and uh, Duck and B and that was out there with us. But they supposed to perform that night too. But Lil J told Lil J tell Quan Butler, like, I ain't, I, I don't do shows with the guys. I don't, I don't split money with the guys. Whatever you gonna do with them, you gonna have to do it. With, you gonna have to get over them. Woo woo. Shit like that. It was a lot of little shit going on, man. You know, girl shit, if you ask me, money is money on bro. And if I'm getting some money and a motherfucker want to fuck with my brother and give my brother some money, we going to all get this money together. That's how it's supposed to be. But a lot of niggas don't move like that. Oh, my dear. You you mentioned the NBA player uh, being a GD. That That's kind of crazy to think about, you know what I'm saying? Because I've seen, like, NBA players... Like, you know what I'm saying? They'll, like, score a basket or something. They'll, and like, they, throw and up they their throw hood that shit and shit, up. you know? Yeah, Kwan. But that's my boy, though. I'm my daddy. You know, we, like, I ain't gonna lie. Good, good, great man. You know what I'm saying? 
we went down, we was down in Green Bay. <clears throat> he he booked four rooms. That was just for the, sh that was the night of the show. But you know, he had Rich Homie Quan and them come out too that night, but he had got us four rooms that night. But we was coming down at like a week and a half before the show. We all at his at his crib down in Green Bay. We down at his his little brother them because we fuck with his little brother them over heavy. His little brother was engineering and shit. He had a count his uh his little cousin was shooting videos, so he was really just plugging his people in. Motherfuckers trying to get some moving, you know, connects. But great dude though on my daddy. I try to shake that. He come shake my hand and man hand this big. We come I'm shaking up GD with the man, man hand like this on two. Guys. What the fuck? I got some big ass hands on my dad. This nigga shit like this. I'm like, damn. But real GD love on my dad. He showed us some real love. Gave us the Camaros. We got the acting bad and them bitches. <laughs> okay, that's what's up, man. You know, is there a lot of dudes who were like GD or gang related that people wouldn't really expect or know? Hell yeah. That's how. That's I mean. That's that's the majority of that's the majority of the population nowadays, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers be gang related, but then people keep they their relations away from, you know what I'm saying, the media. Because the media have a bad way of tarnishing a person. You feel me? Right that sometimes the media uh put some some good some good things up about a person, but <clears throat> if it's anything gang related or anything in that history of negativity. You know what I'm saying? The media have a crazy ass way of just really tarnishing a bashing a person and tarnishing them to no return. Yeah, I've seen it happen. Well, NBA young boy, beat his case. Y'all talk of my daddy, Shawty. And so. After he beat his case, he said he wants to do his first show in Chicago. You know, he come to the so hey, he come to the rack. You know, them schoolers definitely got him on first grade. Them schoolers gonna make sure he cool. Why he why he in the city? Oh my daddy, fucking that. You know, for know what's going on. Do you think he was just doing that to just troll uh, little Dirk and everybody? Hell no. Nah. Even if he was, though, who gives a fuck on first grade? I mean, I, honestly, I feel like shit. Everything that they receiving from Shorty is the same shit that they was dishing out. You know what I'm saying? Now they got a motherfucker who in the same ballpark as them that's getting the same attention as them. You feel me? Oh, um, bro. And he's saying what he pleased. Just like at a point, they was just saying what they pleased. They got the whole world saying they smoking Tuka. You see what I'm saying? Now. Shorty fan base is shorty fan base is just as large, even larger. You know what I'm saying? Because the money talk, money, money, the money showing that shorty fan base is larger. You know what I'm saying? Shorty bringing in, he bringing in that shit. But the thing is, nah. You see, he dissing OD. He smoking V Roy. He he doing the shit that they was doing, and they don't like it. They uh, now he see firsthand. Young boy seeing it, he experiencing exactly what my 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 brothers and them was experiencing. The reason why they ain't signed, why a lot of my brother and them, why it took them so long to get to where they where they supposed to been at, where they supposed to be at right now to this day. Young boy experiencing it, he experiencing the black ball firsthand. Motherfuckers like, oh, how, how can they, how can a, how can how can they be blackballing y'all? Uh, so I mean, like, look at look at look at the situation now. Young boy was way bigger than him at one point. Him getting on house arrest, put them up there with him. Able, where they was able to blackball him. The same way they did with us. Oh man, if y'all fucking with them, we can't fuck with y'all. We ain't fucking with y'all. Uh, in order to fuck with us, y'all gotta sign these type of contracts. Y'all can't work with these artists. You see, that shit was real. Now motherfuckers seeing it like, oh damn, they doing young boy the same way. So now motherfuckers, no ducking them one line, Billy them one line about, damn, it's hard for us to get signed. It's hard for us to get a real contract because we being blackballed. Keith made sure Shorty Nub couldn't get into the industry when he got in. Interscope tried to sign Duck, and I'm not a hater. Interscope tried to sign Duck and Lil J, flew Lil J and them all the way to New York. And when they got there, told them, hey, look, our artists, 
don't want y'all on the label. We paying him too much money in order for us to pick y'all up. We have to drop him and pay him out. And who who really for to drop somebody and pay my fuck out six point eight million dollars? They come pick up three more people, four more people, and got to get them probably the same bag, if not more. That shit not happening in real life. It does look like things are kind of changing a little. You know, I seen Kevin Gates speak on uh, Duck and, and said he was a real dude, a real street dude in an interview with academics. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I saw Kevin Gates and I saw Wiz Khalifa. You know what I'm saying? I was just about to say Wiz I, Khalifa. Yeah. Did it at his show. Uh, uh, had a dedication to Duck and the cash, cash, man. So... That's, you know what I'm saying? That's like, love. I, I don't think that was okay just a couple of years ago. And, and it wasn't okay a couple of years ago, Capone. You write about that, but you want to know what make it, why I say it's so much love right now coming from Wiz, why I feel, because Tuka was a Wiz freak. You couldn't tell Shondell nothing about Wiz Khalifa. That was his boy. So it's, now we looking, we looking at fucking 15 years later. 12 years later, right? And my boy, favorite rapper, showing our hood some love. Only, man, folks would be going crazy right now to even see Wiz even show a slight hint of mention of our, of our, our way. I'm my homie, he'd be going crazy. He'd be, he'd be saying, that's his work. That's my work on King Fella on Frank. Shorty be saying that's his work right now. And, and, Rather motherfuckers admit it or not, that is his work. He up there working. They up there all together working. They getting that, hey, look, this shit got to get done for bro now. They ain't up there working. And it, it, it probably ain't coming together as fast as we want it to. But they showing us, hey, look, bitch, we making it happen for you bitches. And now it's up to us to do something with this shit. We on these platforms. We in these positions that we've been scribing for so long to get in. Yeah, speaking of Tuca, I seen you went and visited his grave recently. Oh, yeah, for sure. Got to. Got to. Got to go show my boy some respect. You got to. So motherfucker got to understand this, man. In order to survive out here in these streets, bro, motherfucker got to get back in a lot of ways. And people think by, oh, yeah, okay, well, I showed up to this event. That's slightly giving back. But, you know what I'm saying, when you really put, when you take it, your time, it, the majority of the time, a lot of people don't even be doing shit. But when you take your time out to go show your dear some real respect, some real love, you got to understand, these are already our angels anyway. These are already the, our protectors anyway while we walk this crazy earth. So for so for them to feel us, duh, to feel our presence, duh, that shit mean a lot to them. And I've been watching a lot of crazy-ass movies like, motherfucking the originals and shit like that all, you know what I'm saying with the vampires and witches and shit so that shit really got a nigga thinking I'm like dead I'm just be high though don't mind me this nigga I guess this nigga is here <laughs> Don't mad me, man. I just be high. Vin I, hey, look, I'm venting to the we. I'm venting to the audience. Shit, they here with us. When they be sitting in they motherfucking front rooms and shit, they feel like they be here with us. Shit, kick me. Pass me y'all wood, cool. And that motherfucker better not be shout. <laughs> no, no, I just fucking man. Yeah. Speaking of Tuka, do you feel like people show enough respect or or show up enough for Tuka? Hell yeah. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, it be people who, motherfucker, don't even know folks. They be shit. Talk your shit, the real shit, man. Oh, my daddy niggas don't be, niggas don't be doing what happened. Motherfuckers don't be doing what they supposed to be doing. Oh, my, oh, oh, when it come to that shit, motherfuckers. Yeah, period. That's just something the period. Yeah. Just when it come to the dads, a lot of folks don't, folks don't be coming how they supposed to be coming for. A lot of niggas don't be coming how they supposed to come for their dads, bro. You know, I mean, but everybody got their own life. Everybody live their life a certain type of way. But you know, if you portray to live your life this way, and you say you're doing this shit for a certain name, oh bro, it's only right that you do the shit the correct way. Oh bro, show the love the righteous way. 
You know what I'm saying? If you can't show no genuine love to the person who passed away, I, I, he gone. Who next in line? What, what all the love go to? His mama and his, and his little brothers and his loved ones, his sisters and them, right? At least that's how it's supposed to go if he got kids to kids. Feel me? And a lot of the time, niggas don't be coming like that. A lot of the, a lot of the time, a lot of these niggas, they holler out that Tukaville shit for on my homie to get attention. They, they, a lot, uh, the fuck it don't even be coming like that. It hey, don't, bro, it take one of they brothers or they cousins or uncles to die in this shit to fuck niggas to really act like they, how they supposed to be coming. I'm like, hey. But, my fuck just, when they come to Took on first grade, my thing on first, I'm not, a, I, if I run into a nigga that disrespected Shondell, right? I want to say this, is to say nothing else. Right, I'm a re I, I love Tuga to death of me on first grade, and I think loving the Tuga the way I love folks is gonna be the death of me one day, right? So to see a nigga disrespect my boy publicly on the internet, and then I run it to him, what we talking about? You know what's going on? I don't get no. F I could be like, I right, so look, I could be in tour with like with me and Cash. We had all the differences or whatever. Right? When a motherfucker mentioned Tuka when they was arguing with Cash, when motherfucker get caught, motherfucker get they ass spanked. On folks grade, right? A motherfucker kill you, beat your ass. Something gonna happen. Ain't gonna be no, you walked away. Oh yeah, we talked. Who the fuck do that? Where they do that at? On folks grade, you, you motherfuckers be screaming this. They took a real crazy St. Lawrence this, that, and the third for this, for, for this boy, right? So when you run into a motherfucker who could sit and disrespect that boy's name all over the internet and you don't do nothing about it but speak to him, you pussy. I'm, I'm disgusted with that nigga. I don't fuck, I want to say who I'm tongue about, so, and fuck that. I, 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 ain't, I ain't biting my tongue. I'm my daddy, fuck. All right. Man, I'm disgusted with these niggas, fuck. I, I ain't running into no nigga that disrespect my homie, though. I don't fuck, you know what I'm saying? But I'm protecting our brand. First grade. But I'm protecting the brand. I hear you. I hear you, man. Uh, definitely. Well, uh, you mentioned, you know, people dissing Tuca and, and dissing the dead. But Gucci Man came out and called on people to stop dissing the dead. You know, and, you know, he's mostly known for dissing Jeezy's homie. A uh, pookie look, which you know. I mean, he got every right to though. Not saying it's not saying it's right, but um, this is you got. If I killed you, I'm gonna talk about how I killed you, cause bitch, you shouldn't even been playing with me anyway. I ain't even fucking with WAP right now on my dead, but that's real nigga. I put that bitch in a box. Why wouldn't I talk about him? Why? How come I can't speak freely of him? Motherfucker, put a nigga in a box and didn't get away with it. How you can't speak freely of it? That's what the double justice for. I'm my daddy. That's what they invented these laws for. You know what I'm saying? For you, to double. Okay, double jeopardy. Oh fuck! I know this ass, but I beat it. Saying I didn't, right? Uh, yeah. If but once I beat it, they can't recharge me. So why not talk about it? I did it already. It's been charged and done. People were kind of saying that it was uh, kind of funny for him to be saying that because he kind of started the trend. He did, and he just this Jeezy homie again. When they did their little live uh, battle rap together. When they did shouty, that was some gangster shit. My daddy. He, mm, that was some gangster shit. Hey, couldn't have been me. Hey, don't let that shit happen to me, though. Well, folks, great. Nah, for real, though. Don't let that shit happen to me. I ain't going for no shit like that. I don't give a fuck how much money y'all pay me. Fuck, this bitch gonna go to the moon. My dad. Did you trip out when you seen that? When you seen him? At, when, I mean, Jeezy actually held his composure pretty he good, did. man. Bro, I, I was surprised. That's the, I, you know what I'm saying? Jeezy, he, he reached a point in his life where he outgrew that situation, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it probably wasn't even his real homie, for real, for real. It was probably just a nigga who just be around. You know, you know how that should be. Niggas, just, you get a little, little attention, niggas hang around you. Anybody ass niggas. My dad. One thing I've noticed about Chicago, 
is a lot of guys who became ops actually knew each other as kids and in some cases were even friends. Did you have any situations like that? Hell yeah. All the ops is my friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real though. On a serious note though, you know, I used to be cool with all of them. The whole O. Go to the parties. All that. But the moment they start playing with my homies on fourth grade, that's when shit got to get sticky for them. You feel me? Because they chased my homie Gucci them from Jaro. They chased folks them about that bitch. We used to have my little cousin party. Four of them ran. It was, it was a lot of them. Four of them supposed to run. But four of them got up out of there. But I'm still stuck in this bitch because I'm at my auntie crib. I'm like, there, this good scenario. I'm fucking great. Nah. The true story, nah. T. Roy and them out there. Keita, little brother, and them, all them out there. Oh, my sister, nah. Ah, my cousin, nah, my big cousin. My big cousin, same. He getting that. He on, he on my auntie. He, boy, you finna go out here and beat they ass. I'm fucking beat your ass. Ooh, ooh, Yo, homie, them just ran. They ass some hoes. Ooh, ooh, My, my big cousin, now I'm in with all my big cousin, my big brother, now. Now, you know, they getting down on my homie. You know how that shit go. You know how. Family see your homie them run, you know, your family them get the going on the guys, whatever. But you in your head, you can hey, okay, whatever. I know for them ain't no goofies, but uh, my cousin, them get, oh, you gotta go out here and fight the shorty now. You gonna beat their ass on beat your ass. I go out there, I fought T Roy. I fought Key the little brother, the nigga with the one eye now. Nah, I can't think of his name, but I know the nigga got the one eye. Him and uh and job is from the O. I I fought all three of their ass, cause four of them ran. But they know what's up, and you know, it's merch. I was reading the comments. They talking about some butter. I always telling the story. Tell me he knocked it. I really do be knocking niggas the fuck out. So y'all know. Oh, oh y'all really gotta do your history when you when you. Uh, he just be saying no. If I bust your bitch ass, you gonna hit that flow. Oh my daddy, but yeah though. Mhm. Mm we you, we start kicking their ass. They ain't like that shit. You know what I'm saying? They ain't like they hoes come hang on gyro. They ain't like that. We trying to turn the, uh, the ball out girls to Jaro hoes. But that's little shit, though. I'm not dead. How old are, were you when all this happened? Like, 11, 12. I was like, yeah, I was like 12. Four of them was like 11. So this is kind of, was kind of like the beginning of, of the problems and everything? Hell yeah, the start. For, for, gyro, for the Jaro end. STLEBT already had it going on, you know what I'm saying? Because they was going to school with them. So for them already had what they had going on with them and TYLB. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah, that was like 2000, that motherfucker. Then it was like 2006 when we got into it with them. Yeah, 2006, 2005 when we got into it with Parkway. Yeah, but it was like 2009. The little story that uh, I can't think of the little, the little guy named from... Uh, from O Block, he been doing a little, he been doing his little stories and shit. He slight told the story the right way, oh bro. But that's his, that's his end of the story. Y'all gotta hear my end of the story on my daddy, cause he got epic from our side. We was out there like, we was out there like 40, 50 swole. All shorties, no grown man, none of that. We all kids, all kids. Oh my dad, but shorty them came through the block, they was like 20. They probably like 20, 15, 20 deep. They come through the block looking for me. They what about a woo woo. That whole time I'm I'm deep in the hood. I'm on the deuce. I'm a motherfucking uh I was on Langley at the time. But then me, Lil Nate, Gucci, Lil Durell, and Act walked back down, we walked back down the roads. Now we sitting in Ant Hallway on Rose. Oh my daddy, uh Lil Nate, Lil Nate walk, no, nah, Gucci walk off. Come back, Gucci come back like five, 10 minutes later. He out of breath, fat as hell. He on hottie. Bought a whole, he bought the whole parkway just came looking for you the whole week. He bought a whole week looking for you. I'm, what, what? I'm the fuck they looking for me for? Then my mama called me like, uh, it was a bunch of little boys on the side of the house. These little niggas came to my crib. On my, on my dead father, they came to my crib, bro. On oh, first grade, he left that part out. He ain't, he ain't tell me before how they came to my crib. On oh, my daddy, sure they came came to the crib, knocked on the door. They they had a uh, little PJ from uh six hundred. That was my shorty. I used to call him my son. They had little PJ uh little car CB. 
they had PJ and Kyle come ring my doorbell because I, I was fucking with them. Uh, PJ, uh, Lil Kyle, motherfucking uh, Dot and Tali from 600. Them was my shorties. I was going to school with them. Oh, my daddy. They got they make sure they them ring they make sure they them ring the dope bed. OG like yeah boy all these little boys on the side of the crib woo woo now Gucci like man yeah they just came over here looking for you um boy they at my house now Gucci like four them say come walk on Vernon woo woo we walked to Vernon all the guys out there they out there so fucking deep I'm getting that damn where you bitches come from I'm my like, daddy now we all out there that bitch bossing now we walk to the drive we at the we in the courtways we on uh. What the fuck they call themselves now? Uh, I don't even know what the fuck shorty them call themselves. But in the tunnels right down uh, 61st, we right there on they shit. Now we in the tunnels. Now uh, Reese G, the only grown motherfucker. Nah, Reese and Twink was the only grown motherfuckers out there. Now uh, Reese, like, uh, we at Reese crib in the tunnel. Reese, like, yeah, whoa, whoa, they little ass just came in the tunnel looking for you. Now I'm like, uh, I'm all right back. I'm mad. I'm where they go. Ooh. They like, man, he like, they walked towards 59th. I'm like, right, my OG just said they just left my house. So now we all walk back to the corner on, on 61st. Now we get to 61st of King Drive. Ah, right, look. All they little ass coming from Indiana. Deep as hell. They got garbage cans. All, they got all type of shit in their hand. It's a, it's a, so many of they little ass. They see me. I'm right there. I step in the middle of the street. Now I know I got all the guys behind me. So I step in the middle of the street. I'm walking. It's me. It's me and little Nate. Me and little Nate, we in the middle of the street. We walking. He on dab, he on dab, but I'm gonna knock one of their ass out. Woo, um, now we walking. They, they see me, they getting that. They go butter right there. Yeah. They all jumping up and down. I'm just standing right there. I'm looking at them. I'm, they funny as here. They don't even know. So as soon as they get close, they get close to us. Now we on both sides of the street. Four of them get to come from both corners. Boom, 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 boom. We, they look, they must have looked. Take off. They, now they run up, they run up Calumet. We running up the, now the Cali Mac Bills had just got two down, so it ain't nothing but a big ass field. Oh my daddy, we warriors. They running, we running, we on they ass. We got a few people that stop, they wanna fight. T Roy, tough as hell on my dead son. T Roy, little jo job is from O Block. Oh, they tough and over tough. T Roy, job is from O Block, and Keto, little brother, the nigga with the one out. Oh my daddy. Said that they think it's fight time. Oh yeah, they must have looked. Hey, get that get up out of that though. That's how we end up catching TP. We beat that boy so fucking he shitted and pissed on himself. Cause he told the story. So I had to tell him I had to tell it over here. Oh my dead. Cause we definitely beat they ass and everybody ran. Oh my homie. Only person we called was TP, Inky D, Manny, Mumu, and Lil Car. And I, I was telling bro, and I'm like, get up off that with Inky D and Manny and Lil Kyle and, them, and, uh, and, and, and PJ, because them was my little homies. I go to school with these niggas. I'm getting that. Folks, them going to be on the other side of King Drive. I gotta, I still got to go to school o over here on they shit. Feel me? So I'm getting that, and I leave them alone. Lil Darrell not trying to hit none of that. Him and Lil Rock, Lil Darrell, Lil Rock, and Lil Mikey over extra. On Tuka, Lil Rock, boss Inky D, Inky D fall. Lil Mikey, boss Lil Kyle, put Lil Kyle in the hospital. My dear, so put, put, they put Lil Kyle in the hospital, and that big Kyle ended up blacking my eye three days later on Lil B Gray here. My shit sitting on Twinkies. Oh, my daddy. My shit sitting up getting that puff puff. <laughs> I'm blow. Fold up, beat that boy up, put that man in the hospital. That man, big brother, came back and beat my ass. Oh, my daddy. <laughs> big ass nigga, big Kyle, big as hell. He smashed me out quick. I'm going to the stove. Get my wine, black him out. Get my switch of sweet. Oh my daddy, big car, come out of nowhere, hop out the car. Boy, y'all, y'all jumped my little brother last night? What? I'm boy, you tweaking. What you talking about? He catch, I try to run, he grab me, punch me up, slam me on the gate. Oh wait. I went and got my mama. Oh my daddy. My mama come back, big ass butcher knife. Y'all got us fucked up. She that fight a one-on-one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. What were they looking for you over? Is there is this something you could talk about? Man, over a girl named Aisha. Man. They can't even whoop my ass over Aisha, bro. It's merch. Aisha was that though at the time, so I ain't gonna make it seem like she on my daddy. 
she was definitely that. She still that. Aisha Mack on my grandma. But T, it was because of TP, the nigga TP. The, and look, it was so crazy because they came to my crib for TP over Aisha, right? And then that's who we end up catching. When they all ran, when the crowd broke out and everybody ran and left him, that's who we end up catching, the motherfucker who sent everybody to my crib. <laughs> I did. We made that boy piss the shit on himself. Yeah, sounds like a, sounds like a wild time, man. Yeah, we was kids. That was the fun days. That's when niggas was taking their ass whoopers and going home. Now I'm gonna get their ass kicked. They wanna pop you. Don't shoot me. Let me shoot you. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Oh, my dick. Oh, Mr. Cap. Last time we did an interview, you told a story about fighting Rondo number nine. Yeah, yeah. And man, that thing went viral. It did it did YouTube numbers, it did Facebook numbers, it did Twitter numbers, it did Instagram numbers. Uh a college kid picked it up on his Instagram page. I mean it went crazy. Man. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't hit I didn't hit an M on a book. I was out of must have a meal. My daddy. Yeah, man, that was crazy, man. Uh did you know Rondo before jail? Did you guys have history before that? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, we knew, hell yeah. I knew Shorty M before jail. But, you know, he, I we knew him from the hundreds. Cause you know, we used to fuck with uh, Cannon Boy and them. Cannon Boy and them, they used to shoot the videos and shit. And, uh, and let motherfuckers come to their studios, come to their little parties and shit. And, uh, you know, Rondo and them, they was, off, they, they was off the other side of 112. You know what I'm saying? So motherfuckers had already knew Shorty enough from around the way. So when they started claiming 600, we looking like, what the fuck? Y'all little ass from the hundreds. Whoa. But you know how that shit go. Niggas start getting attention. Everybody flip. Mm, okay. Did you and Rondo have any incidents on the outside that you can talk about? Oh, yeah. On the green line. Oh, my, the, oh my daddy, we get it on with them. Lil Rock, Lil Rock broke D, broke D nose. Brick knock, Brick knock, knock, Brick knock Rondo out. Well, he ain't even knock him out. He just he he put him down. Brick put him on his back pocket. So, bro, that was a big ass fight though. We got it on that day, on the green line. We was on Roosevelt on the platform. You talking about the o, the rumble with you guys in O Block in downtown? Oh, I did. What well, not like it? What well, not like it? A name that I, you know, I hear a lot about, but I kind of don't really hear a lot of people talk about is Taekwon. And I heard you guys had a, a really good friendship, relationship. Yeah, yeah, my boy. That's my young boy. Folks, great. That was my shawty, man. You know, it just, it, when it comes to Taekwon, man, you know, it's, it's a sad subject because at the end of the day, you know, he was 12 years old when he passed, you know what I'm saying? Lil Bro didn't even get a chance to experience real life. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, there was so much more out here. Like, we did so much more. Motherfuckers did. Been places that motherfuckers thought we'd never be more. I, honestly, I never thought I'd leave Chicago, especially not 63rd. Oh my daddy, I just thought I'd be a blockhead all my life. But I've been in different states, different cities, you know? And Lil Bro ain't get a, get a chance to experience that. But you gotta think about it. It's more kids out here like Taekwon, more little boys of first grade, and they looking up to the shit that we got going on right now on my daddy. But what motherfucker gotta understand is, what the fuck are your family gonna do, man? You 12, 13 years old, you dead. You know what I'm saying? That shit hard for a parent to really function a, a, t t at any age. You know what I'm saying? It's hard for a parent to understand that they child gone. But for you to be 12 or 13 years old and you die because of the streets, you know what I'm saying? That's that that that's that that's different. And a lot of kids don't see that shit. A lot of people don't see a lot of people pro, yeah, my son like that. I'm a Tuka, yeah, your son could be like that, granted. But then when motherfucker put your son in the box, then what? You can't even bury your child properly. When you could have, hey, let me let me leave my child down this down this path. But instead, a lot of female, it, it, I ain't even just coming at females because I'm going to say what I'm going to say about, about niggas, about males too. But a lot of females be so hooked on that gangster shit 
that they think it's cool for their son to be, yeah, it's cool for your son to be, have some thoroughness to him, to have a little roughness to him, but at some point, bro, motherfucker gotta be parents. I understand we all was kids having kids, but motherfucker gotta be parents at some point. Motherfucker gotta be, oh, no, nah, my, my child not doing this. I'm not letting my son do do not do this. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even gonna, I'm not even for the portrayal like that. My son can't even play with Nerf guns at the crib. You see what I'm saying? Because, I don't know, man, you know, that, that's me. I can't tell nobody how to parent their child, but a lot of motherfuckers can't even bury their child the proper way. But they want their son to be a game bank. They want their son to be a gangster. Oh, my daddy. They want their son to be out here. How often does somebody like that who's gang affiliated get killed? Does that, does that happen quite a bit? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, it happens like that, but with the Taekwondo, yeah, little bro was what he was, but Taekwondo, you know, shorty ain't deserve to be killed, especially not, you know what I'm saying, not the way he did. Do you have any stories that you can share about him? Man, I ain't gonna lie, Ta me and Taekwondo, man, we used to do so much crazy shit, but Taekwondo used to always be in his feathers because, you know, my baby mama was his best friend, too. Oh, she's my best friend, but she was his best friend too. So Taekwondo like, to be like, oh, motherfucker go downtown stealing and shit. They motherfucker, uh, they come back to Layla Merchant. She Taekwondo be, oh, you finna go about it? Y'all finna, y'all finna dip off, go buy the weed. Y'all ain't gonna answer phone for me no more. Whoa, whoa. But majority of the time, we used to just be getting high. You feel me? We getting high, walking around, getting high, cool, walking up to 63rd, hollering at somebody's daughters. You know what I'm saying? And then, oh yeah. Hey, what's shorty name for 800? He got the little hazel brown eyes, for a little light skin short. He like, the, he, he, he short, he short as hell, but he, he wanted a, he wanted a, he wanted those though. Mm -hmm. Oh, I did it. I can't even call DJ and even save his number. I definitely want to call him, ask him what's the shorty name for. Oh my, I did, but him and Taekwondo, him, Taekwondo, and Polo, they get into all this shit. Oh yeah, we, we had kick some little kids, kick some kids ass from 800. They was out there tripping. I ain't gonna lie, Lil Rock the Don from Jaro, that bitch got hands on my daddy. That nigga, he, he punched motherfucker to sleep on my daddy. <laughs> Big fist bitch, oh folks gray. He out there crunching their little ass. Uh, one thing I seen on the internet is that Taekwon's death had a big effect on KI. Yeah, it had a big effect on a lot of on a, on a lot of people. You got you got to think about Lil Bubs, Dro, Hershey, R. P. Richie Jerk, but Kyra, you know what I'm saying? Kyra, Lil Bubs, you know what I'm saying? A few of them, they 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 really took Taekwon. All we all did, motherfucker, took that shit a certain type of way because. It's Taekwon, you know what I'm saying? That's the last motherfucker you expect something hap to happen to. You know? He so he was so little. He went up but like fuck it. He wasn't even four he wasn't even I don't even think he's four eleven. You know what I'm saying? He was little as hell. <laughs> nah. He was twelve. Yeah, he was twelve. He, he had a body of a nine year old. <laughs> He was little as hell. You thought and when you saw Taekwon, nah, he was yeah, little bro was twelve. You would swore he was like ten. Little as hell. So for something to happen to him, in you got his his energy alone. Taekwon brought that hyper energy to you, like where you were like if you was down, Taekwon to make you. He he will force you to be back happy. Oh, hottie, bouncing around. Oh, job is bitch for. Steady saying funny shit like Sko. They some they funny as hell. You can't not be mad around them or sad around people like that. I don't bro, free spirits is what I'm gonna say. You can't be you can't be mad or sad around a person who live life as a as a free spirit on my daddy because they bring they it's like they here to bring happiness and joy to your life. You know what I'm saying? Mm, okay, I hear you, man. One thing I noticed about Chicago and the drill scene is that, you know, little little JoJo's BDK song had a really big effect it did. on everything. It did. I mean, but you know what I'm saying? 
That's, that was just for the people who were just catching up to the shit, you know what I'm saying? Because it was already gone. You know what I'm saying? JoJo just made it. He he he, he voiced it for the world. Because you got to think about it. The motherfuckers who we was in too, it was already voicing this shit to the world what was going on in their music. You know what I'm saying? So it took Duck, Young, JoJo, it took motherfuckers like that to come and voice our side because in real life, a lot of people thought we was losing for a long time. But in real life, we was really winning. Gladiator style on my daddy, bitch. Nah, let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. I quit. Nah, though, for real, though. But, you know, JoJo... When he when he did the BDK song, you gotta think about it. It was so many people that was already BDK before the song came. So to hear a motherfucker say what we been saying in the hood, that shit broke. What's the word? I, I don't even know the word I want to use, but that shit was gangster. I did. What he? That shit was gangster. Were you around when they shot the video or anything like that? Hell no. Nah. You know, they asked from off the other side. Um, bro, I'm from that part of King Drive on first grade, deep, you know what I'm saying? Deep on the other end of King Drive. But yeah, and you know, fooling them off the other side of state and shit, you know, they over across the bridge and shit, you know, I don't be doing that shit. Only time I'm going outside my hood to go to another nigga hood is like MOB or motherfucking Crazyville. Other than that, I ain't, I wasn't going out my way to go to no other nigga hood. Hell no, nah, that's how it's always the nigga who ain't from over there who died over there. Won't be me. Mm, okay. What was your first reaction when you heard the song? It was me, Sad, Skinny, and Kyra. We was walking to the St. Lawrence store. I and Little Real from Jaro. We, we was all walking to the store. And uh Skinny was like, hey, y'all heard y'all heard Shorty from Brisk Squad that BDK? Woo-woo. Kyra like, yeah, we just playing that shit last night. Woo-woo. I ain't hear the, I ain't hear it though, but I was hearing about the trend on Facebook. Motherfuckers was talking about like, damn, little JoJo just get that BDK. I'm okay, cool. Now we walk into the store. Uh Skinny G Skinny playing the shit off his phone. Oh um, bro, we so we I'm just walking on the side of folks, watching the video, listening to that shit. I'm like, oh, okay. Shorty just nutted up on my daddy. He just did that. How big was it in the hood for the for the GDs? I ain't gonna lie, like when he did that, folks great. He he I ain't gonna lie, he, he piped a lot of GDs up though. Because we I ain't gonna speak for Nobody else. I'm going to speak for my side because we was the GDs that was already BD Cam. We was already living that shit and loving that shit. So to hear another motherfucker hood come how we was coming, we can, oh yeah. Okay, but we had already, we was already fucking with JoJo. Well, see what the niggas don't know is we was already hit, we had already had our little connects with Wooga World and Brisk Squad now because Young was going to school with, Young was going to the road with them. And, uh, how we end up getting slightly involved with that Lamarod shit is because uh, JoJo and Young, they was they was fucking with each other. They was, you know, on some GD shit, getting high at day for school. They fucking with each other. And uh, the BDs end up getting on, they getting on, they end up getting on JoJo ass out the school. This when JoJo got through through the McDonald's window. Feel me? On my daddy and I, Young was with him. They whooped Young and, and JoJo ass. So when they whooped Young, you know, we can have, what? Hold on. Oh, we, oh yeah, dog pound the lamb around them tweaking. They already know it's to us on my daddy. Because in real life, Shorty and them already knew it was just to us. Because we had just bumped, we had just bumped his with them at a, uh, at a pink, uh, at a pink missus party. The, uh, you know, it was groups, of, the saddest group of hoes back in the days. All up, uh, they had threw a little party, but we ended up bumping into Lam D-Town lamb around and that bitch. So they already knew what was going on with us on bro. Nah. We get that they did. What? Okay, cool. We go back up to the road. We rock that bitch. And it been up. It been up ever since. I feel that we was locked in with Shorty and them ever since, though. I'm my dad. Okay. You know, and then the news comes out that he was killed. You know, and uh, a lot of people probably believe it was, you know, maybe not completely over the song, but, you know, the song probably had, probably had a big influence on, on people wanting to go after him. I mean, 
before motherfucker understood what a troll was, Joseph Coleman was a troll on my daddy. Shorty ain't get no fuck what he say, how he said it, who he said it to. Motherfucker just really sit back and just pay attention to how he came. His name was also arrogant. And that's how Shorty came. He felt like could nobody touch him, could nobody fuck with him. And he had every right to feel that way, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I just made the top this. I got the top this in the city. Why wouldn't it, why he had every right to feel how he felt, but Shorty just, you know, motherfucker got to pay attention to what he, he did what he want. He said what he want. I'm um, bro. So the song was like slightly the reason. But then motherfucker got to think about all the shit he was doing after the song and before the song. Because granted, Shorty was a rapper, but he wasn't no rapper for real. Shorty was a slider. Shorty, he had his, he had his sliders up in the game on my daddy. He was a get, he was a do it. On my daddy, get busy. So. Yeah, when you get busy, you rap, and you troll the motherfucker on the internet, man, you know. Motherfucker, we know what's coming with this shit. I'm dead. Yeah, I, I seen an interview that O Block was uh, happy, and they threw a party when he passed away. You know how that shit go. But you know, it's BDK Friday, every Friday, long live JoJo. I'm my daddy. I was going to get into... A, a, something a little bit uh, different than Chicago. Uh, since our last interview, you know, our last interview, like I said before, went viral a few times. But since our last interview, uh, Jada Youngin was killed in, in his hometown. You know, he was a dope artist, you know, out of Louisiana. And, uh, you know, at only 24 years old. I mean, his dad was also shot. Uh, you know, pretty sad situation, man. Man, you know that shit fucked up. You know, but you don't. I don't, I don't know nothing about that shit. So you know, I really can't speak on 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 what they got going on. And you know, even though J.D. Young had played with Tuka and them name and shit, you know what I'm saying. I was gonna say something crazy about him, but he did. So what? What's the point of even saying something about him? You feel me? And we ain't even in tour with them. They all the way out there. They is they asserted they self in some shit that is that didn't involve them, but. Cadona's out to his family, though. I seen a picture at it from his funeral where they had snipers on the roof just in case anybody showed up and tried to do some shit. Did you see that? Hell no. Nah. That's, that's G. I like that type of shit. Make it. Everybody felt comfortable in that, bitch. Do you feel like they need to do stuff like that in Chicago? Nah, because you get, you know, people get very emotional in Chicago at funerals and shit like that, right? You know what I'm saying? And motherfuckers sometimes don't be having their brains on straight when they go to funerals. A lot of people be intoxicated. A lot of people be high off other drugs where it be hard for them to really function in life. And it take the slightest thing to tick them out because they are already going through what they going through. So I feel like, hey, if anything, fuck the snipers. Just put the, just put the police out there, man. Let the police make sure these people do their funerals peacefully, going about their business. You see what I'm saying? It ain't shit for a police to sit outside a funeral home 15, 20 minutes and make sure everybody leave the facility. You know what I'm saying? Safe and secure. You know? I mean, I think that's the I think that's what you're supposed to do, right? I don't know. We we be having them bitches. Oh no, we we are all security at the front. Okay. Uh, did you know Melly from 051? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Melly was. How cool. did you guys meet? Uh, me and Melly met because I had took off on a shorty from 800 that they had brought to the hood in uh, Rockhead. It was Rockhead, some, uh, I can't even think of the little nigga name from 800, but they came with, it was Rockhead, Shorty, and S Smooth, and shit. Cray Cray, like, uh, Cray Cray got on that with Rockhead, because Rockhead supposed to have said something about, uh, about, uh, Tuka on the internet, on Twitter. And he ended up coming on the block, so Cray Cray ended up getting on that with him. And oh yeah, lived the real. I took a little real, jumped in front of Cray Cray on some Captain Sabo type shit. So I took off on the little nigga from 800. And then later on that night, 
this is my first time meeting Melly on my daddy, but I, motherfucker, you know, motherfucker hear motherfuckers' names, motherfuckers know who motherfuckers is, we know who motherfuckers is, but motherfuckers never really met. Now, after I do that, and after all that shit happened, Melly ended up pulling up in the van with one of the, with one of the guys. Lil' uh, O. Melly, Lil' O. Fat Shawnee, and somebody else, they all pull up in the van. Melly, now it's, it's me, Cray Cray, Kyra, and Lil' P. Free Lil' P from EBT. I'm like, daddy, now. We all sitting on the gate. Melly jump out the van. He like, hey, butter, check it out. Woo, woo. Melly on broke though. He had just, I think he had, this one he had got shot in his elbow. So his arm broke and she got a cast on his arm. He, hey, butter, check it out. Woo, woo. So, you know, I slide over there. What's up? He, we rotating shit. He like, man, I, he like, he like, man, rock head off limits. That's when the eyes, woo, woo, woo. He like, that's just like when y'all, cause, I know that was my second conversation I had with Melly. The first conversation I I wasn't really talking. I was just down on on, on security on Tuka for billionaire with the guys, cause Melly and them came on our block, and billionaire, you know, folks, Welch real, but he gyro on my daddy, and motherfuckers was telling him motherfucker had to tell Melly and them like boy, that shit did, cause pre boy look pre boy and kiddo hot as hell. They getting there, they trying to get out, they trying to get out on being uh, on the block in front of all the hoes and everybody, but motherfucker had to tell him like that shit over with being a uh, gyro, he STL. If y'all catch him on Watch World, that's that, but y'all can't do shit to him while he on our block, you feel me? Oh my dear, that was the first time. So the second time, you know, motherfuckers running to him, he like, yeah, you know, motherfucker, he like, it's the same way with being uh, he like, you know what I'm saying, y'all supposed to get Rockhead that pass, woo 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 woo. Now like I told him, I'm like, shit, that pass went up to me, that. I'm like, Cray Cray ain't like what he said. Cray Cray got on his ass, woo woo. Then that's when he called Cray. He called Cray from EBT. Cray, Cray walk over there and shit. Now him and Cray, we all right there. Me, Cray, Kyra, we all sitting right there in the back of the van talking to Melly. Oh, my daddy. He was cool as hell. And then when Lil Mark, you know, Lil Mark and Lil B died, probably like 24 hours apart, something like that. And uh, me, Lil B, Kyra, Cray Cray, Melly. It was a couple of us, we was all riding around. Four cars. My dad sliding, gliding, cooler with the coolers. My dad, that was real shit. You know, he, he had a, a hell of a reputation, man, but I seen in an interview somewhere that, like, you know, he didn't talk, act, or dress or anything like, like somebody who was really about it. He was. I mean, you can't, de you can't define a do it from how they dress or act or even talk at this point because a lot of niggas talk like that like that but then when it comes down when that pressure gets you know what I'm saying niggas get real get, shit get real cold for get colder than December and a lot of niggas be real shook on my daddy but they got that shit they got that gangster shit down pack and it, it, it's always the non gangsters who got that shit down pack you feel me and the niggas who really like that you be looking at them like he not like that Motherfucker be like, but that's the nigga who like that though. The motherfuckers who motherfuckers look at like, oh he a goofy. Whole time the goofy, the the the, the real dude out out the crowd. Motherfucker who you thought was the goofy. You just see what I'm saying? And sometimes the toughest looking nigga is the softest nigga in the crowd. Motherfucker, it's all a, all this shit a facade on my daddy. A lot of niggas live their life around facades, but but Melly, shorty was a gangster. I ain't gonna take nothing from him. As long as they don't take nothing from us. Mm, okay. Have you heard of that model Cuban Lust? Who, who shorty who got that shit with AIDS? He talking about shorty who... Uh, AIDS, I don't baby. think she has AIDS. He talking about shorty who got the AIDS, Chris Brown. I'm, I'm going to show you a picture of her from before and what she looks like now. And I want to get your reaction. Okay, that's before. That's before. This is, now this next picture is a picture that came out like I don't know a few a few weeks or maybe a week ago or something. Oh my daddy, what the fuck? Oh scrap. Oh that that for a scoop. A school fool. Look at this lady fool. What the fuck? Oh my daddy, look at this lady fool. Damn. <laughs> nah, no, look, that's the, that's this this the before. Look at the before, folks. Shorty, some you feel me? I'm fucking now, okay? They go to the right here. My father, what happened to you? Holla ass like young thugger. Oh my daddy. 
<laughs> she on that bitch looking like thug. Talk, talk about it. Hey. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I quit. Nah, though. Damn. What? She knew she had that shit, G. She told me she, she had that shit over, over 10 years and she ain't know. Look at her. So she thought her skin, her, her skin and her body was the tarnishing away like that for no reason? That's just oh, oh, in real life. And then, ain't, it, ain't no enough makeup ain't saving that, folk. Breezing them had to be high and thirsty, folk. They had to. Because I know, I'm fucking got a flu on my day. I'm fucking got a flu ugly bink binks on it. But that be them, you feel me? Fucking high off that shit. Fuck, put that little bink together on my daddy. But that. My dick conceded on my sister. My fucker see that and be like, fuck, why y'all bring her outside, G? That's the friend who sit in the car. Don't nobody talk to her all night. She just sit in the car. One motherfucker pass her the weed through the window. What fuck it damn? You hear her now? Damn. No. Yeah, man, that's a... Uh... A good example of how bad drugs can mess you up, man. I be high. Capone. You know I be high. I be fucked up when I be when I come see you. I just be fucked up in life, period. Like, but look. Come on, man. Even Ray Charles sink that shit. I'm like, yeah, y'all know he had y'all know Ray Charles did the little thing where he felt, you know what I'm saying? He would have felt the risk in that. Nigga, baby, you had a little more weight on you last time before I saw you on my daddy. Look at her. Nah. <laughs> nah, for real. Y'all don't remember. So y'all didn't see the Ray Charles movie, bro? He, and y'all remember he was at the bar. He get that grind. He grind. He grind a bitch wrist the whole time. It was a dun nude, though. You feel me? He get that. Hold on. Uh uh. I'm good. You feel? Ray Charles knew what he, he knew what he knew. He get that. Uh uh. That, that bone too fat there. <laughs> hey, no, nah, though. For real, though. Seriously, though, man. She wrong. Because she knew she had that shit. I understand, you know, a, a lot of these females be fame whores. I mean, that's I, they say it over the internet, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's quite, it's cool to say, right? It ain't nothing I'm going to have to blur. you going to have to bleep out, right? Because that's what they call themselves, fame whores. That shorty was just on no jumper call. She, you know, she said she a fame whore. She like to fuck famous niggas and shit, right? And a lot of females get wrapped up in that shit. But you gon' you gon' you gon' tell that man, you gon' you gon' you gon' fuck this man up for the rest of his life because you just wanted some dick? Cause you just wanted to be around him. That shit mm. wrong. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Nah, them the type of people that need to go to jail. Oh my daddy. I ain't got no self morals. Mm. No. Real though. Do you think uh, have you ever seen anybody get that messed up off drugs or anything? What looking like that? Yeah, I seen some people get little off drugs on my on my on my baby. I just seen some thick shit go small. I just seen some small shit go big too though off drugs. But that right there, that ain't no drug. That, you know what I'm saying? She ain't she ain't she don't look bad because it ain't the drugs. It could have been meth, but she black. And a lot of black people don't be smoking meth like that. Oh, bro, they like cracking shit like that. Feel me? So, but yeah, though, she wrong, bro. She, look at her. She this big. And her face, she look like Young Thug by the face. Oh, my daddy. So, you, how you go from turkey to motherfucking beans? Right. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty uh thought that was a pretty wild story, man. There was this viral story out of Florida, man, about a rapper named Queso. And and this is kind of crazy, man. And his dad is be I mean, he's being charged with murder, and his dad is being charged with accessory after the fact. That allegedly he like helped cover up the murder or or something like that. I don't I don't really know the details, but you know, he, him, him and his dad have been in jail for a while fighting this case. And then it was revealed not too long ago that his dad, dad came out and is actually going to cooperate against his son. His own son. Him, him fucked up. 
he fucked up. But <clears throat> at the same time, you know what I'm saying? We all men, right? So, I mean, I wouldn't, me personally, I, I'm not gonna speak on this, on his on, on, on full situation like I really know what's going on, but it had it been me, and I got in a situation with my father, you know what I'm saying? My father wouldn't have to figure out, out there, what I gotta do. Because as a man, and what's right on my home, hey, look, if it's my shit, I'm gonna go take care of my, I'm gonna go, it's my weight. Ain't got no choice but to go do it. Go on, go home, pops. Feel me? Do what you gotta do, go to the crib. And that, then that could probably be what's going on. And a lot of people don't know. He probably under the, hey, look, boy, tell my daddy, man, go and do what he gotta do to get home, man. You feel me? Cause this is my shit. He can't be under that, all right? But then at the same time, Shorty was just slightly at, he was just hitting the top of his peak before he just got bumped. And shit, if you ask me, on took his daddy been on life. He been living his life for a long time. Go and take that little case for your son. Let your son come home, bro. Fucking take care of you and that bitch pops. We got you, oh, my daddy. That's righteous. Shit, cause you gotta think about. It. I mean, if it was me and my son, and my son got me wrapped up in some shit, I'm gonna do that time for my son, man. Go and go home, son, son. Especially if he's at the top of his his peak in his career. Hey, go on, go home, bitch. But y'all about to make sure I'm well fed in this bitch. And my celly cellies, nobody be getting, be getting money put on their books so I can get more food. Oh, my daddy. You see what I'm saying? That's real nigga shit. I, I mean, his dad was probably only looking at like two to five years. I mean, I don't know. They tried to hit him with like 30, but it would. He not going to do no fucking 30 years. Yeah, nah, especially conspiracy after the fact. So, okay. The, uh, uh, the most fuck what four to fifteen? They gon' they 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 break the the six to thirty down to four to fifteen. So he be anywhere from four to fifteen at fifty, and they downstate in that southern place. They, they shit like thirty five percent on my daddy. Motherfucker, he would have back. He be back like next year. Feel? That's what niggas go wrong at. Motherfuckers feel like, hey man, I sat in jail too long. I want to be my case. I'm going to trial. But hey, if I get off of some time where it's daylight at the end and I already, you forgot to think about it, you've been sitting as it is already, so whatever you missing, you're gonna miss anyway. Oh my daddy. So fuck, take the look, I'm gone. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm, 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 give me TV, give me fan, give me hot pot, give me food. And I'll see you fools in a couple of months. We're gonna knock these calendars down, answer the phone. Oh my daddy. A name that I, I've heard about, but isn't probably so famous on the internet, but it's kind of like underground big and like a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, like who really know the drill scene kind of know about this guy, you know, and I, I believe you guys were good friends, is, is Lil B. Lil B? Yep. Who, EBT? Yep. Oh. Yo, Grim did Reaper. Did you guys? Did you know him? Yeah, yeah, I know. Who, who don't know the Grim Reaper? I'm my daddy. I love the Grim Reaper. Wish he was his. I still wish he was here with us. I'm my daddy. Let's see, hey, look. R.P. to King Lil B. Right. Let me tell you why I say this. Cause he was a real goat, and what he did, and he did what he did, and he took it to the heart. You see what I'm saying? He was in that shit for the long haul, and the police knew it. See what I'm saying? Motherfucker knew they had, the police knew they had to kill my dog. For real, for real. When the police know you a threat and they can't get nothing on you, what you think they gonna do to you? They gonna eliminate the problem. It been going on like that for decades. You know what I'm saying? It took us a little minute to catch on to it, but we know now. Now it's time for the new generation to know it. You know what I'm saying? They gotta understand, just like Lil B, and the people before Lil B, the menaces to society, as the people call us, uh, call them, uh, my homie. Yo, that shit only lasts for so long because they hate whatever the streets don't do to you, the police is gonna guarantee to do. Right if they put a bogus case on you or kill you, it's bound to happen. But it's, on, it's up to you 
to do what you got to do to avoid that shit. Go get you some money, young boy. Do you have any stories you can share with Little B? Hell yeah, we was at the club and we had to beat this nigga ass in that bitch. Cause he hit, he bust Lil B shit open in that bitch. I'm like, daddy, I ain't even supposed to be in no club. I was in that bitch thugging though, cousin. Lil B, they go across Lil B shit with the Remy bottle, split folk shit open in that bitch. But it ain't end well for them. Cause we, 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 oh my daddy, we stumped shorty head through the stage. We broke the stage. Oh, um, folks, Greg, we was in that bitch beating his ass. Oh, um, bro. Then you gotta think about it. a lot of the guys big as hell. Big Weedy, them in that bitch. He try to run, Big Weedy block him off from getting through the door. We kill him. My daddy stomping his head to the, to the stage. He trying to get out, out that bitch. We in that bitch. Break the bar. Hell yeah. You might be the first Chicago rapper I've ever talked to that actually talked about being in the club. Do you guys, is that like a no-go for you guys? Is it just too dangerous to go to the club? Man, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I've been at the club, I've been going to the clubs lately. But I don't go to the clubs in Chicago. That shit ain't safe. Okay. It ain't, I ain't, you know, I could have been, I could be anybody. The club not safe for a lot of people in Chicago because you gotta think of it like this. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of young people. You know what I'm saying? Who go to clubs. They go to clubs and be high. And they be tweaking. And a lot of these niggas be tweaking in these clubs over these bitches. Because niggas go to clubs with bitches. You see what I'm saying? Well, I ain't even going to say bitches. A lot of men go to club with females. And get, and get in that club and be tweaked out. Because it ain't it ain't the next brother fault that you came to the club with no fucking Bapiana. Oh my daddy, you see what I'm saying? And a lot of uh, and people don't understand that motherfucker take their aggression out on the wrong person, bro. You never get mad at the nigga because that nigga don't owe you no loyalty. He don't even know you. You gotta talk to your female, and that's what make the clubs unsafe because a lot of the times people don't even run into their ops at clubs. They get into it with outside motherfuckers. Well, a motherfucker who they'll never see again in the day of their life is if motherfucker have a little fist fight. They probably never see each other again. But nowadays it's not a fist fight that's coming with this shit. Now if you if a nigga feel like you if 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 a man feel like you disrespecting him about his woman, he he liable to kill you instead of fight you. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. just keep that hoe away from me though. Or my daddy. That's all I can say. You don't want your bitch to get splashed. Keep her away from me. Oh my daddy, cuz yo ho gonna get slayed. Oh my daddy, you bring her to these slums, that ho gonna get slayed, cool. And I'ma make sure my brother them get some too, so you she you, you she about to have some buddies. Oh my daddy. Oh she gonna get hit. Bringing it back to the whole little B thing, you know, <laughs> how did he end up getting killed by the cops? Flee. He was just running from the police. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you're a hot person on the streets, motherfucker, police see you, they jump out on you. You know what I'm saying? Just off, off who you is. You know what I'm saying? And bro ain't even had shit on him. But the police so used to motherfucker knowing, like, oh, damn, every time we <coughs> catch Rasan, he got two guns on him, or he got a gun on him. So, you know how that shit go. Okay, okay. Uh, in our last interview, you mentioned C and D Rose in jail. What was that? What is that like? Did you guys get into it? Did you guys have any conversations or anything? Nah, me, me and I Ben get me and I Ben. We don't, we don't never get into it. No matter what, we bump heads at. We we bump heads in the. I mean, well, I'm there. I call it Shorty by his real name. Me and me and me and D Rose. We don't get into. We don't really get into it because you got they they grew up under me. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of motherfuckers be like, oh, but I supposed to be from that way. And I feel like, nah, y'all ass supposed to be from this way. You feel me? And that's just how it is. I, like, D. Rose used to hang on our block. He used to fuck with Bribrat. D. Rose, used to, he used to fuck with, uh, with Bribrat and shit. So, but that was my shorty. I went to school with them. I was going to Bessie Ross. I graduated from their, I graduated from their grammar school. I got kicked out of our grammar school, A.O. Sachs, for fighting the teacher. And then I ended up 
I went to our Turner School 50 East Summers. Then I went to Bessie Ross. When I was in the, when I got at Bessie Ross, I'm in Bessie Ross with all the BDEs. Four of them go to Carter, Carter down the street. So I'm leaving. I'm getting out of school, walking down to Carter with meeting the guys. You said you uh, went to school with all, all the BDs. It, do they have schools like like over here? You'll have like a school that's like majority Crip school or majority blood school. Do you guys have it like that also out there? Every I right, so every block got they like a school that I right, this the school we all gonna end up at for grammar school. You feel me? Majority of the time that's how motherfuckers build they little cliques. Motherfuckers be homies from grammar school on up. Yeah. So for like high, when it came to high school shit, our school we was we was high park. But uh, I couldn't go to High Park. High Park ain't accept me. I had to go to motherfucking uh, John Hope College Prep. But I'm dumb as hell though, so don't think I'm smart, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, though, but yeah, though. Hell yeah. Because if you end up in the wrong school in Chicago, your ass to die. Period. Right? If motherfucker beat you to death. Or motherfucker might kill you. You it's a it's 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 a slight chance you might get popped going to school nowadays. Fuck around you get popped in school. Oh my daddy. Y'all don't see these little boys walking around with all these fucking guns in school. So motherfucker gotta be careful. And then they come down to the parents too though. Hey look, hey Amy Capone, now look, it go did this go back to what I was saying about a lot of parents don't be raising their kids right. You see what I'm saying? Because you don't know what your child into in the streets, granted. But sometimes when you know your you, your kid in that shit, you gotta pay attention to him. Motherfucker gotta ask them who you in tour with, what's going on, because a lot of times parents go put kids in school and they, they fucking child end up dead coming, leaving school. You see what I'm saying? Or something happened to their they child at school, on the school premises, so, shit like that, because you weren't paying attention to what you was allowing to go on in your household so your child adapted to it. And you know, this shit real. These little kids like to kill people now. Fuck about to stop playing. How did you maneuver through everything? Going to a school with a lot of BDs. I'm butter. I like to get high. I stay with some females. I, I really out the way. And then if you try me, I'm going to kick your ass. That's just how I feel. You know what I'm saying? But for the most, I knew my little cousin, got my little cousin them BDs and shit though. Just no, seriously though, on, on a serious note though. My fa my family, my family's BDs, right? So, and they dops. So, granted, a lot of motherfuckers wasn't doing shit to me because they, oh, that's woo woo cousin. And I'm in the mix. Uh, ever since the shorty, anybody who knew me know, hey, look. So I fight and I keep me a pipe on my daddy. I ain't I ain't, ain't going to be doing none of that. What you want? We could, we could do hands, we can do guns. But motherfuckers know I would kick some ass, though. I, I, I prefer to kick some ass or get my ass kicked, however that fight turn out. That's how it turned out. Feel me? Because I ain't going to win them all. But on my daddy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. That was great. And I, I, I'm like 101 right now on Neil, Neil Wallace. Short. You know who the one is? Yeah. I said I'm like a hundred and one right now. O'Neal. You know who the one? <laughs> <laughs> I just play. I'm fucking around. Hey, now nah, though, for real. Who is the one? Huh? <laughs> you wanna know who I got my ass kicked by? Oh my yeah. daddy. I got my ass kicked by my father. He broke my shit. You see that? Oh. Broke my motherfucking nose. I jumped out there like I was ready for him. And he told me to stop putting my hands, because I was doing like this, talking to him. And he was like, hey, put your hands to your side. Yeah, you know, I was high off the pill. So I'm like, feel me, old man, woo, woo, woo. And he, foo! Broke my shit. Broke all this. O'Neal, they should have locked his ass. O'Neal Wallace, he should have went to. No, I'm just. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no, though. No, for real, though. 
my pops, he, yeah, I was calling myself being grown. I was really just half the pills tweaking with him. And he broke my shit. But I would have did the same thing to my son too. Don't be putting your motherfucking hands in my face. You feel me? Mm. I was wrong. I can accept that shit now, but when he did that shit, I was like 16 when he did this shit. So, you know, in my head, I couldn't really process it. Like, damn, nigga, you just broke my motherfucking nose. Damn. You mentioned having some family ops that are BDs. Yeah. What's that like? I mean, for the most part, they cool. You feel me? They don't be on shit. I ain't on shit anyway. It's my family. We been grown up together before this game banging shit, but yeah, they cool though. Hell yeah. What at like family get togethers, everything is good? At family get togethers, you know what? At our family functions, my family ratchet. So that shit be busting. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm fucking around now nah, though. My my great my great aunties they they uh cherry keys on Tuga so you know I got my my family real uptight on my dad sister they my my mama mom my mama mama sisters and them you know they uptight and shit they but you know we be cooling the young the younger crowd my BD cook girl cousins boy cousins whatever they is stones we all when we all get together man you know what I'm saying it's like. We all kids again, pushing the bunk bed, push, pushing the beds together. You know what I'm saying? Getting it all. That's that, we getting this bitch flipping off mattresses. That it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? We get that type of vibe. Motherfucker get back around. Damn bitch, I ain't seen you since. Whoa, whoa, whoa. we smoke now. Nah. He might not smoke. He drink. You feel me? But it's something that we all grown. So when we come together, it's a good experience. Oh, um, bro. For sure. Okay. Uh, did you hear about that rapper Gnu who died a few months ago? Who? His name was Gnu. Uh, he was out of. You say what? Yeah, Barry Oh, dude, with the, uh, with the, uh, a Mary, with the whole yeah. Mary fit on. Yeah. They they buried him standing up. He's performing this shit at the club. Yeah, they had the video of him in the club. Oh my dear, that shit was some scary shit, but that shit was raw. People was creative as hell in this new generation. On folks grade, did have y'all ever think that y'all uh, experienced somebody fucking frontal with being at a club? A motherfucker, fuck that. Have y'all ever think that y'all see a motherfucker dead standing up for their frontal service? Motherfuckers, I've never seen that. I didn't even think that shit was possible. But yeah, that shit was raw. That was that. That shit was, and they sponsored money. They had some money. My dad, he ain't that broke. What was your first reaction when you seen it? These folks crazy as hell, man. These, I, I, I saw that shit, I'm like, these people crazy. But that, that's one hell of a, that's a frontal rule that a motherfucker had to be there in order to like, I, I, I would've had to be there to really sit down and have this conversation because that experience is, some amazing. Not only am I seeing my dog go away for the last time, but we in this bitch having a ball with my dog for the last time. That's one. Think if you really think about it, that's one hell of an experience to experience. Like then, it's my last time kicking it with my homie. For my homie funeral, we was in the club for his shit. We threw a party, it was a going away party. That's basically what they did. They threw him a, a going away gathering, and he went out. That shit gonna always be talked about because ain't nobody never thought about doing They ain't do no shit like that for Fluky Stokes. Fluky Stokes got buried in his motherfucking Cadillac. Neil. Oh, okay. You, you knew somebody who got buried in a Cadillac? Fluky Stokes. You don't know about Fluky Stokes, man? I don't. Oh, my dear. He look. <laughs> Fluky Stokes. Like, well, Fluky Stokes is a pimp from out west, right, folks? Huh. Yeah, I think Fluky, yeah, yeah, man, Fluky Stokes. The man was, but they say he had a lot of money and shit. So I'm just gonna tell us what I, what I think I know. You know what I'm saying? They say Fluky Stokes, the pimp from out west, who, was, who had a lot of money. I think he died in his Cadillac, and then they buried him in his same Cadillac. They, they got his Cadillac turned into a casket, if I'm not mistaken. 
that shit, that, 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 it, that was some, that, you know what I'm saying, that was some gangster shit. I'm on dead. Fuck, still talking about Fluky Stokes right now. The nigga got buried in his car. So you know motherfucker gonna be talking about that nigga. That nigga was standing up at his front room, at a club. That one hell of an experience, the experience, man. Wish we could have thought of some shit like that. He had a ball with four them before they left. We had hoes holes in that bitch. Suck a four them dick and everything. Suck that dead dick, bitch. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a going away present. Go huh? ahead, bless him. You know you love him anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa. <laughs> no, we can't do no shit like that for our homie. Them phone them, phone them head, to, that phone them hoes ratchet is here. Why well, did they didn't, they didn't fuck around? Knock folks over in that bitch. We didn't have, we didn't have to beat a bitch ass in that bitch. They didn't fuck around, drop folks in that bitch. Oh man, that's crazy, man. Hey, yeah, hey, 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 school, hey, young school, hey. You know how the parties be, right, folk? Motherfuckers barely be able to move around in that bitch on my daddy. So you got you, you got to think about it. If motherfuckers do a funeral service like that, folk, we motherfuckers been in that bitch fighting. Y'all to knock folks over in this bitch. Watch out, y'all tweak it. <laughs> Bring a little seriously humor to the situation, oh bro. In our last interview, you brought up a guy named Brubra. And the comments went crazy, and they were kind of mad at me because I didn't ask you more about Bro Bro. Now, is, is there any more incidents, or is there anything you can say about that dude for the uh, for the fans? I ain't gonna lie. Before Bro Bro got on that on that op shit, shorty your little ass you, used to be through our shit on Bro. You know his sister used to fuck with our big homie and shit. So you know how that shit go. Oh my daddy, but shorty the last was the loose cat. I'm I'm shooting dice in the court weight. That's like two thousand motherfucking six. We in the court weight shooting. Nah, nah. This is like two thousand seven. Yeah, cause Dalvin had just died. Rubber had a white colors. So oh my daddy, we we out there shooting dice. Oh, two. They they pull up him and some other little nigga. But I end up find out who the other little nigga is later on down in life. Uh, little BA. My dad, they pull up, hop out on us. We all out there shooting like that. It's this nigga, it's this nigga that ain't big country. Uh, it, he be on, he be on King Drive. He be on, he be out there on, uh, what the fuck, shorty, them call themselves? No, Savage Squad. He be out there in Savage Squad, 1017 Blow Line. On my daddy. Nah. Big country. On my, on my sister. Nah. They script the nigga asshole naked on tooth grade. Rob, they robbed all us, though. On my daddy. They put they robbed everybody. Oh my dad, they robbed the whole dice game. I was took I was I, and I had, I just hit somebody. I just hit a crib. So I just hit, sold my little flash screens and shit. Fuck it, I love money and they pop my offer. Go to the dice game. My dad go to the dice game and get robbed. Salty. Blue. I ended up seeing brother like 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 two weeks later. He uh he come and get his sister Tanil from off the block. He hey little butter bitch. I'm what's up, boy? He, hey, boy, you want your little hundred dollars back, boy? Oh, my daddy, let me, let me get that back. Damn. I ain't gonna lie, he robbed our stupid ass. So, okay, so he, so dude had like a really, really wild reputation. Hell yeah. Okay. All right, well, yeah, they was asking about him, man. You know, I guess he has a, a pretty big reputation within the drill community. I ain't gonna lie. Shorty, he, Shorty gonna always have a notorious ass name, you know what I'm saying? Cause, hey, look, I'm not a hater, and I get niggas they credit when it's dope. So if you did some shit, and you said some shit, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that shit, that's true. That was gangsta, motherfucker, get, motherfucker, they, motherfucker gotta get nigga credit when it's dope, and a lot of people don't understand that. People be hating so hard that motherfucker I don't even give you the credit. So, but look, so this this real nigga one on one, he got my credit to bruh, bruh, he was, yeah, my sister shorty ass acting crazy, and I ain't talking about little bruh for fucking seventy first. We ain't talking about the little niggas, fuck. We talking about the real bruh bruh for four six. I'm on daddy. I I heard uh, you and Chief Keith have a big history. On my daddy, that bitch know. On my sister, shouty know. You feel me? 
He, I, I, I knocked him out. Oh, took him. I knocked him, like that, a real knockout. Ain't no, he fell. No, I, I really put him down on my eye. E. Blakey from EBT, we catch him. Well, they really caught me. I was getting on the train going home. So, you know, I had to get on the green line and shit. Just go to the crib. So I was on my way to the crib. Them niggas was sitting in a restaurant on my day. Now, I go in that bitch to get my steak taco. You know, they got the $2 steak tacos under the train. Nobody know about them, nothing back in the gap. And I'm like, daddy, you know what? It's out late night, it's 12 o'clock. Last train, get ready to come. I need that steak, I need them two steak tacos for that $2, $2.75. I'm like, daddy, I go in that bitch, they in that bitch gang banging. They get right on, I ain't gonna lie, they get, it's like get on me. Ooh, little, little boss Mumu, little, little Mumu from 600. He on Steve, it's him, Scooty Looty, Scooty Dooty, whatever the fuck, Scooty Looty, whatever the fuck his name, little Scooty from 600. Uh, Gabby, Chief Key, Baby Mama, and I. This is what me and Keith really getting into it about, cause I was I was busting on the phones at the time, so I'm getting I'm getting Gabby the I'm getting Gabby the uh the the Boost Mobile chips. You feel me, huh? Shorty? I'm getting a bitch too. I'm getting like two three chips at a time, cause we on took. I'm getting like 40, 40 chips, huh? I'm fucking fuck them, fucking burnouts. This shit ain't nothing. No my idea. Shout out to Crazy Field. Shout out Boss Duro. And my homie R P Wale. I was took her. That's when I really started seeing some real money. Fuck her with Shorty now. But I get a I'm, you know, he he now Keith blacked a little, he black he black Gabby. Ah, she called me. I Doro, I'm in the car with Doro, Debo, and Wale, we go pick her up, boom. Two days later I end up seeing her back with him. I'm getting on the train though to go to the crib. So you know, I walk in the restaurant, I'm, yeah. Okay. I'm like, dead. Now nah, he, what's up? He, what's up? He, what's up, little insane? Woo, woo. Uh, Fredo, brother, uh, Cape, is that Cape, the older brother? Cape boy? Fredo, Fredo, oldest brother? Cape boy was Cape of the little brother. You don't know? Juice? <coughs> Who's that, little brother? Right, I'm talking about the big brother, so. I'm out there. Now it's him, Keith, Fredo, big brother. Mumu, Scooter, and I, it's brought by sister Tenille, and uh, and uh, Pebbles, you know the little bitch Pebbles, the little ice and Pebbles, I'm like, now they all in the restaurant. Now, uh, I see Mumu, I, get, I ain't gonna lie, I get on that with Mumu. My dear, I get right on that with him. I get right on that with him and little Scooter. Now, Keith, and, uh, and, uh, Caper, they standing on the side. I get right, I get right on that with Mumu. I'm bored, what the fuck y'all doing on this side of King Drive? Whole time I'm pump faking, I ain't got no bumper. I'm, I clutch like I got that. But what y'all doing on this side, King Drive? He, he, boy, he, uh, 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 BD. That shit dead, pig. I ain't gonna lie, blow me, blow my soul, cause all the little hoes in the restaurant, when he on BD, that shit dead, pig. They, he just said pig on BD. I'm blue. You feel me? I'm on, I'm on, I'm on Jarvis, don't be, I'm on Hotty Gray, I'm on Jarvis, don't be right here when I come back. Extra as hell. Walk off. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. The blocks fake getting that dance. I get that call. E blink. I'm where you at, bitch? I'm on folks gray. I'm mer over them for over the merch. He, I'm, he, I'm walking down Apple High. Oh boy, they just call me in the restaurant. Whole time I lie. To, I'm lying and shit to E blink. I'm yeah. They just try to whoop me, folk. Woo. Front the move. Whole time they weren't even just on that. I came in out overly aggressive. <laughs> nah. Blink like, all right, we finna go back over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I meet up with Blink, he give me bomb oh, before we go. We walk. Nah. Blink, Blink like, he cut up, he cut up, he cut up Vernon. Now I'm still walking across 63rd. He cut up Vernon. He like, Alpha, he like, uh, stand right here. Now I'm standing on the side of Rock Childs. He, I'm gonna call you when I'm coming down King Drive. He, we gonna try to meet at, the, we, we gonna try to meet at the same time on, on, on King Drive. I'm all right back. Now he called me. Now, Whole time, I'm trying to hear what he's saying. I got this bogus ass flip cricket. Y'all remember the little silver ones? I'm my daddy. Silver and black one. Ah, that bitch is trash. I'm, hello? Whole time, he like, he telling me like, I'm right here walking behind them. Woo woo. But I'm, hello? Hello? Bogus ass cricket. I'm my daddy. <laughs> now, I, I, now he, I found him. Now he like, he like, where you at? Where you at? I'm right here. I'm thinking he said, I'm right here. So I started speed walking. Whole time, he say, they right here. So when I hit the corner, I hit the corner, like we, we all run into each other, like boom. 
We run it to each other. Now it's Keith and Gabby, Caper, Mumu, Scooter. Now it's a nigga in a wheelchair across the street sitting in the wheelchair. He loose square, it's loose square. He over there funny as hell in the wheelchair, my daddy, no legs. <laughs> now, only reason I remember him is because he he get that when I, I bust Keith. Now, I mean, I'm, now, now, we, now when we all meet up, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm boy, what's up? What's that tough shit y'all just saying? Now, I keep like, but I ain't got shit to do. I, before you can even finish, I bust him. Boom. He get that up, fall, pop, fall, fool, fall. Caper, get that on David, little butter. Your ass tweaking. Blink, get that. What, bitch? They look back. They, they ain't even no folks with me. He, what, bitch? They, ooh. They get that. Roaches. Spread. Get up out of that. Everybody get the running. The, now, the, uh, the hype and the who's sitting in the wheelchair selling the squares. He see, he see, blink. He blink all black on my like, dick, all black, 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 uh, you know, the little, y'all remember them little masks, I was like, you know, with the little, little half face mask thing. He got one of those on. So old school, see him old school thing, he finna get the blue old school to my, that go to police. That go to police. <laughs> oh my dear, that shit was funny to see. Hell yeah, I definitely knocked this bitch ass out. And then that was the end of it? You guys kind of just went your separate ways? Hell yeah. Was that you guys' first kind of interaction and everything? Hell yeah. Hey, hey. I, I got to go, bro. I, 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 I got to slide. It's time for me to go on a crib. My house arrest time over. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh. <laughs> hey, it's fucked up, though. I'm just getting him old. I'm going to get that look down and get it. Damn. Motherfucker got 25 minutes to make it home on my daddy. Well, butter, another classic, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, you know what I'm saying, letting me come out, you know what I'm saying, to sit on the platform and, and just talk my shit, have fun. I, you know what I'm saying? That's what I do every time I come out. I come out to have fun and to share my experience in Iraq, you know what I'm saying, story time from 63rd. You know what I'm saying? From Definitely, man. Uh. You got a YouTube channel out, man. Let, let the people know about it. Oh, yeah, I do. I forgot about that shit. I got, I got two of them out, man. You know what I'm saying? One, I'm, a, you know, story time. for CC. If I ain't on, up here with you kicking shit, talking, telling the story, fuck a find me over there. You know what I'm saying? We, we gonna talk a little shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got a few questions, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna do, post something in my DM. People could shoot the questions. I'll talk about it, you know, or y'all can shoot them to Capone. And we some that give us something to talk about. But uh, shout out to everybody. Free Lil P from EBT. Free Lil Mikey from Jaro. Definitely, man. All right, bro. Appreciate you again. Hey, man. hey, Capone. Hey, Lil P from EBT say, man. He say, tell you, you know, he the one that started all this shit. He say, so when he come home, make sure you hit his mind. <laughs> <laughs> He say, hey, man, I heard you out there on the, on the camp, Capone, doing your thing. I say, yeah. He say, hey, boy, tell him I'm the first one to start this interview shit. Tell him. <laughs> no, though, he was, though. He's the first one to do an interview from our side, though. He just wanted me to tell you, like, man, what's up, though? He really just wanted to tell you what up. Tell him I said what up, man. Uh, you know, hope he comes home soon. And, you know what I'm saying, be safe in there, man. For sure. All right, Capone, man. Appreciate you, man. See you next time. I'm finna DM you or something, man. All right, bro, for sure.